Okay, this is the epicenter right here. Epicenter, C-E-N-T-E-R. Um, and the, the waves are going to happen uh, closer. They're gonna, the, the waves will be closer to you. You'll feel it more than, of course, if the earthquake is way over here. In fact, let's go ahead and watch a short video clip right here where we talk, uh, where we're going to see where um, a seismometer is located and how they do the installation of the seismometer. So this is a seismometer, which is really the heart of this whole operation. It records the ground motions. And these, this is a Streckheisen STS-2 seismometer. They're made in Switzerland, and they record three components of ground motion, so up, down, and north, south, and east, west, or actually on these, it's something like that, converted. And they record little earthquakes that are close by, as well as big earthquakes that are really far away, so they record from 120 seconds on the long end down to 50 hertz, which so that's called broadband seismometer. Well, the station is hooked up to, uh, which runs off the car battery, the full load battery, and the battery is charged by the solar panel. And then the little antenna on the left is a GPS antenna, which is also used in this case for timing rather than for location. It will give location as well. And then on the right, that little tiny white antenna is for the cell phone motor. So, right, so the data is going by cell phone onto uh, the internet and then it goes actually to San Diego and then it's dispersed everywhere. And now let's talk about how waves bounce around inside the Earth. So it turns out that the waves themselves um, once they're formed, they bounce in and around the entire Earth. And since there's seismometers all over the Earth, you know, here and here and here and here and here, it actually tells us some amazing things about the interior of the Earth. It actually is what helps us to understand that there's a core and an inner core and all those kinds of things. But again, I think we should go to our friends, the experts, Mr. and Ms. Mosier, and they're going to talk about how these waves work. Okay, so a little bit of Whoa, snafu on there's us. A, there's there was the earthquake. So now you can see as the waves are traveling out from the epicenter of the earthquake, they're being recorded by different seismometers across the globe, and they are bouncing around inside the earth as well. So lots of different information just from that one earthquake, and we can tell worldwide where the earthquake occurred, even though... Here we go again, earthquake in Alaska near the Gulf, and... Here go the wave fronts, and as they cross all the different stations, it records the P and the S arrivals all over the world. Looks like chaos, but hey, not really chaos. But lots of wave reflections, lots of bouncing around. 
we have to take all the different seismograms and interpret them all into figuring out where everything took place. So let's talk about time travel graphs and how those work. Actually, I don't want to go there. And so let's take a look at our time travel graphs. So here comes our time. Here they are. Here's a time travel graph. All right, so what you're looking for is, remember, there's these two waves. There's, as you look at the seismogram, that's the S wave, a primary wave. And that's the secondary wave. And so this differential right here um, is a certain amount of minutes. So let's say that that's four minutes right there. So if we've got four minutes right there, what you're going to look is find where the, the gap between here and here is four minutes. You should copy down this graph. We're not necessarily with the 13.7 or whatever. But you're going to try and where there are four minutes. Well, you, you know, where they were down here wouldn't be four minutes. It might be two minutes, right? And so if you, this is four minutes, you can come down here and you can say that that earthquake occurred well, roughly, if, if that was the four minutes or whatever, would be roughly 5,000 kilometers away. And so this, this graph right here, this S and P, or time travel graph, is the same for any. And so if I've got uh, several of these, I can actually determine the exact location of the earthquake. And actually by the size of the, of the lines, which we'll learn about later, we can determine how big the earthquake is. Okay. Time travel graphs are very important. Now just some interesting things here. This is actually an ancient Chinese seismograph. And what they do is they have a, yeah, it's just very innate and qua, but they were measuring earthquakes thousands of years ago, the Chinese were, with a device that looks like this. So it's pretty cool, I think. And here is another one, the mechanical version. You can see the roller right there. So they've been measuring earthquakes for a very long time. So some ancient ones. We're doing it all via computers and stuff these days. Here's the modern version right here. And this is just sitting on a table. We can see it looks like right here we've had an earthquake. Yeah, you can see that pattern that take, took place. Probably, yeah, so cool. Okay. And let's talk, a little, talk about this one here. This is a really a cool um, seismogram, a seism seismograph, pardon me. You can see kind of three dimensions, up, up, uh, you know, uh, three dimensions, left and right, you know, X and Y, but then they also have the Z one coming out. And so you can see this, you can see how they have the paper. This actually works, it's made out of glass, and it records um, earthquakes. So that's really, really cool. So. so this picture has kind of an interesting thing. It's, it's probably not that clear, but they've actually got the time travel um, oops, I went the wrong direction. Here we go. Hello, Eric, what do you do? All right, here, here is the um, S wave travel uh, limit here. It's just, it's just another way to look at it, not, not critical here. This one's an intriguing uh, uh, seismogram. Here we have a particular earthquake that occurred um, near Palmer, Alaska. And if you can see here, you've got the, the P waves first, that's this line right here, and then the S waves, P, yeah, the S waves, and then the L waves, the L waves, the love waves, are the surface waves, right? And you can see how close it was to Palmer, Alaska. Okay, this is the distance in miles from the epicenter. And so it came very quickly right here. But then if you go to the next seismograph station in Golden, Colorado, not far from us really, you can see it uh, lasted longer and they could figure that out. And then the last one, not a very strong record, they call it a quiet record. It's in Bogota, Colombia because it's very far away. It's more than 6,000 miles away from Bogota, Colombia. But these, knowing these three things, we'll learn later, you can determine where the earthquake uh, occurs based upon something called triangulation. So you can kind of see how this all kind of fits together. And then lastly, let me just talk about these seismic networks. It turns out there are seismo seismographs or seismograms, if I can say this right, um, all over the world. And so if you look at each star, these are kind of the main seismo uh, seismographs all over the world. There are literally thousands of them all over the world, and they're hooked up to the network probably through the internet, and you can figure that all out. Here's actually a zoom in of the United States, and here are kind of the primary ones. Probably the most important one, just as a side note, that everyone talks about is there's an earthquake center in uh, Golden, Colorado. Um, not too far from where I'm sitting right now. And so that's a big one right here. And if you uh, even zoom in even further over here, each of these dots represents um, a seismometer um, in the western United States. So there are lots of them. Obviously, you can see tons of them in, uh, in near California. And of course, that's on purpose because California has uh, lots of earthquakes. But sort of the primary one that everyone talks about is actually the one in Golden, Colorado. It's kind of a lot of uh, scientists are there who study this uh, particular phenomenon. So, my friends, we are done. We will see you in class. Bye.